Hello and welcome to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this Writer's Toolkit video we'll be considering what the effect is of varying paragraph lengths and why writers intentionally may vary their paragraph lengths to help us as readers gauge something specific from their writing. A paragraph is the fundamental structural building block of all literary writing. It's actually the way that a writer signals one major idea being blocked into their writing. And with any paragraph, structures are added and developing upon each other to build on the same idea. But it's important for you as critics and also creators in your own writing to ask questions about the power of the paragraph that you're looking at in a piece of literary work, whether it's your own or another writer's. So, the four questions I would consider are, what is the focus of each paragraph in this literary work or the extract that you've been given? What is the order the writer chooses to share their information? Do they choose to withhold some information? How do they shift your focus and attention as you continue to read on? Why is the writer chosen to structure their paragraphs in the fashion they choose? Do they choose to concentrate on location first and then move into the inner thinking of the character, for example? Why do that in that order? Is it trying to prompt a certain feeling from you as the reader? And then I suppose the fundamental question for an analytical response. How is a significant point in that text or a change in viewpoint made clear to you through the paragraph type that you are shown? Now, for this to really come alive, it's important for me to give you an example and an extract to work from. So let's have a look. So this is an extract from Birdsong by Sebastian Fox, And it's from the moment that um, Stephen, who's an army lieutenant, um, is on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. Now, it's a short extract, but these four questions still apply. So hit pause read it and consider what each of these paragraphs have to offer us. So, the initial first paragraph, the second hand of his watch in slow motion, 29 past, the whistle in his mouth, his foot on the ladder, he swallowed hard and blue. Well, it focuses intensely on one moment in time, and it's about Stephen's reaction. The use of simple and minor sentences in this incredibly short paragraph heightens the power of that moment and how it impacts him. As we move on into the next paragraph that's chunkier, we learn a lot more as it shifts to what is around Stephen and then his sense of isolation. The verbs, he clambered out and looked around him. It was for a moment completely quiet as the bombardment ended and the German guns also stopped. It's good context of what's around him. Skylarks wheeled and sang high in the cloudless sky. There's a freedom of nature there. He felt alone, as though he had stumbled on this fresh world at the instant of its creation. So there's a disconnect now from Stephen's experience of this noisy, brutal war zone and, well, there's elements of freedom in nature. So there's a sense that we need to know, first of all, this moment in time. But in the second paragraph, we're given the detail around him. Now, finally, the third paragraph does something completely different. It's so dramatic. The artillery begins to lay down the first barrage and the German machine guns resumes. To his left, Stephen saw men trying to emerge from the trench, but being smashed by bullets before they could stand. The gaps in the wire became jammed with bodies. Behind him, the men were coming up. He saw Grey run along the top of the trench, shouting encouragement. So we're compounded by the simple and compound sentences in this paragraph to learn more of the collateral damage that happens in this war zone. But it's clear that Sebastian Fawkes has chosen to structure so intensely the power of what is around Stephen in this very traumatic experience. The short paragraph at the start heightens his 
immediate momentary experience in the time. And then we move from knowing the time in the minutes of the clock all the way down to experiencing around him what he can see. And then finally, the experience of the war zone itself. And it's as if he's trapped. Now, there's no denying that paragraph lengths could seem just like something that a writer doesn't really think about. But for you in your analytical role and in your creative role as writers, it's important for you to counterbalance that by actually thinking about what the impact is of how the paragraphs have been structured. So whether you agree with my analysis of that tiny extract from Birdsong by Sebastian Falks, it's well worth you considering what is the focus of each paragraph? What is the power of the order with which information is shared? Why does the writer choose to write like this? And how is a significant point in the text made clear to you as a reader through the paragraph length? So the immediacy for me and my final thought for you is that as you progress through this extract, the significance of the trauma that Stephen is experiencing through the bombardment of the senses that come through in every paragraph, it's clear that for every single experience, the paragraph length is reaffirming the bombardment of ideas he experiences and the disconnect between him and what he feels. But what does paragraph length do for you? Consider it in your writing and how others choose to write and whether it empowers you or actually forces you to reconsider your whole style, there's definitely a power to considering the impact of paragraph length. Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical?